In this tutorial, I'm going to discuss probability of independent events. I will discuss addition and complement of independent events. In this example, I'll be using two dice. I can roll a 7, I can roll a 4, I can roll an 8, and so on and so forth it goes. In this example, though, I'm going to talk about the probability of rolling a 7 or rolling an 11. I'm going to discuss and show you the proper notation that you'll see in your textbooks and your classes. I'm also going to show you the complement of a 7, which means rolling anything but a 7. So now let's imagine I have two dice, and on the left-hand side is one die, and on the right-hand side is the other die. I guess dice, dice, I don't know. Now I imagine I roll a 2 and a 3, that adds up to 5. I roll a 2 with the first dice and a 3 with the second dice for a total of 5. If I roll a 1 with the first dice and a 1 with the second one, that adds up to 2. A 1 with the first one and a 2 with the second one, that adds up to 3. I'm not going to do this for all of the dice, it's the first row here. So if I roll a 1 and a 3, that's 4. A 1 and a 4, that's 5, and 1 and a 5, that's 6, and 1 and a 6 is 7. Now I'll fill in the rest of the table, and that's how I get the values for this table. Now if I counted up all the entries or all the events in this table, if I counted up all those, I would have 36 events or 36 possible outcomes. If I add up all the possible sevens that can happen, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, six sevens. So I have six out of 36 possibilities. So that's 6 out of 36. Now for an 11, there's only two possible. 1, 2. So I would say I have two, two chances of rolling 11 out of 36. The chances of rolling a 7 or an 11 is simply 6 plus 2. So I just take 6 plus 2 out of 36 possible outcomes, or 8 out of 36 possible outcomes. And that's a chance of rolling a 7 or an 11. The proper notation looks something like this that you'd see in your textbooks. So I have probability of rolling a 7 is P, and that little P stands for probability. And I'm going to call this event A. So I'd say event A is rolling a 7, which I told you before was 6 out of 36. And now probability of rolling 11 is probability of event B, which is event B. I'll put that B right there. And that you'll remember is 2 out of 36. So if I add these together, I get 8 out of 36. And the proper notation is equal to the probability of A or B, probability of event A or event B. Looks like that. Now, before I have the probability of event A, which is that, now I'm going to talk about the complement. And I write the complement, there's that little hash mark next to the A, that means the complement of event A. And in this case, it's anything but A7. All the red values there. So the complement of event A, I take 36 out of 36, which is all possible outcomes, and I subtract off 
6 out of 36, which is the probability of event A. And this is equal to 30 out of 36. So the probability of the complement of event A is equal to 30 out of 36, or 0.83, or it occurs about 83% of the time. And this is the complement of the probability of event A. Something to consider is, if I take the probability of event A, which is 6 over 36, or about 17%, I'm rounding up just slightly, and I add it to the probability of the complement of event A, so I have the probability of event A plus its complement. This is equal to 36 over 36, or I take these and add them together, which equals 100%. So the probability of an event plus its complement is always 100%. Make sure you try to share the knowledge, like us on Facebook, Google+, or follow us on Twitter. Questions and comments below, and don't forget to subscribe because I'm always posting new videos.